I just ran the Bristol Half Marathon the other day. Check this out. Two triple one. Great event. And thirteen point yeah, two miles, thirteen point one miles. Um Yeah, top quality stuff. Sub one hour forty. Which I was really pleased with actually. I thought I was gonna die around it. Did it with these shoes. The Saucony Ride Nines, I definitely recommend these. These are a great running shoe, uh, especially on roads. Um, fit your butt like a slipper. You don't want to watch this though, do you? Anyway, um, yeah, so be like Nabar. Saddle production. Um, yeah, so this is Be Like Nabar. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, it's located in the northwest of uh, Scotland, uh, in the UK. Um, so yeah, it's in the Highlands. Um, yeah, so Be Like Nabar. It's uh, it's the biggest climb in the UK in terms of uh, total elevation gain from start to finish. So you start at about sea level, uh, as you can see just over on the left hand side of the screen there. Um, there's a, that, that's effectively the sea. Um, so you start at sea level and you end up at about uh, 2,000 feet. Um, so yeah, this is one of the, the greatest uh, 100 climbs in the UK. Um, and yeah, it's rated 11 out of 10 in Simon Warren's book, The 100 Greatest Cycling Climbs. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with him. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, as you can see from some of this footage, um, it was filmed on my GoPro. This, the scenery is absolutely spectacular. Uh, even on a fairly miserable, miserable day, uh, like we went up, um, it was quite cloudy, but uh, no, it's still absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, I went up with a few of my mates from uni, um, and yeah, we ta tackled the slopes going up here. Um, it's uh, the first half, I'd say, are um, pretty tame, sort of. You don't get much more than sort of seven percent, but it really starts to ramp up uh, towards the end. Sort of in the last uh, third, it gets up to ten, eleven percent. Yeah, as you can see from the um, elevation profile there on Valley Viewer. Um, yeah, so I believe there's about two, two miles at about ten or eleven percent, um, which makes it quite, quite difficult. The legs are definitely burning uh, in that last section. But yeah, I just thought I'd share share some of my footage with uh, with you guys because I know you'd appreciate it. So uh, I'm just going to provide some uh, photos as well for you guys to look at um, of of the climb itself. Uh, so yeah, there's a few a few in the winter. Um, it's pretty hostile. Uh, you might have remembered uh, the uh, initial sign at the bottom of the climb that says uh, that it's normally impassable during winter conditions. So it's, uh, it's pretty, yeah, pretty, 
hostile part of the world really in the winter, uh, especially for the UK. <laughs> um, but yeah, sort of uh, at this point in the climb, I'm getting pretty tired now and um, pushing, pushing all the way up. It starts to get pretty epic at this point um, as you get sort of towards the top. Um, cars were an issue as you can see, but um, just gotta get around them. Just uh, keep pushing on for Strava. <laughs> if you don't know what Strava is, check it out. Uh, Strava is a great website to track your progress uh, as a cyclist. But yeah, so we've got some more photos here. Um, it's a nice sort of panorama uh, at the top. There's some pretty epic hairpins uh, as you get towards the top. Unfortunately, my GoPro cut out at this point, so I, I can't show you that footage, but. Um, I think that these pictures will give you a, an inkling as to as to what the scene is like. There's also a few sportifs that go go up the like the bar uh, every year. I think I believe it's actually closed roads as well, uh, which is always good because the road's quite narrow. But yeah, it's a it's a sick climb. I recommend it. Get out there, guys. Cheers.